Hi, this is Joyce Polino Crane. I'm the news director at Westford Cat, and I'm here today with three members of the community who want to speak about the Westford Charitable Foundation and what that organization has done for their causes or projects or, or facilities. So all the way to my right is Jennifer Claro. She's the director of the Cameron, the Cameron Senior Center. Um, next to her is Marianne Serafin. She is the uh -oh, what executive, is director. executive director of the Westford Parent Connection. Mm -hmm. And right next to me is Stephanie McGilligott. Did I get that you right? You did, yes. Yay. Nice. Um, <laughs> who um, is the founder of the Ronan McGilligott Memorial Playground at Nabnasset. And um, Stephanie has a story to tell um, about Ronan. And we'll get to all of that in a little, in a few minutes. First, let's talk about the Westford Charitable Foundation and who's behind it and what it does for this community. Marianne, you want to start with that? Sure. Um, Lori Cagliano and her husband, Herb, oh. um, founded the foundation. I want to say it's been 20 years because the road race has been around for 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, as a means to, you know, they, they felt as though their family had been very blessed and they wanted to give, you know, give back to the community. Don't want to put words into her mouth, but I think that's how she feels, like she's able to give back. If you can, you should. Um, and she's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years for various organizations. There's a couple of dozen organizations who've benefited from her work. And she has a road race. The road race is coming up May 5th, Sunday, May 5th. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know the roads are closed beginning like at 2 o'clock. Actually, uh, yeah, the race itself starts at 2, but people can register from 11.30 on if they haven't already. Mm -hmm. And that tur that's usually a huge, huge turnout. And people come athletes. from all over. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from, so she ra from that one event, she raises the money for her budget in that mm -hmm. for that year and then doles mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. Is there a period when she doles it out, like a uh, certain month? I don't think so, at least speaking for our organization. Um, a lot of our fundraising is done in the fall and she just sends a check. So I think it's all year, depending on the, the need. Yeah, very interesting. Jen, what is she, what have you received at the Cameron Senior Center from the foundation? Well, we have received, um, we have received funding that provides opportunities for older adults um, that are residents of the town to be able to participate in different classes and programs. Um, you know, it just opens the door um, for everyone to be able to have an equal opportunity to participate in things, perhaps that maybe financially one would not be able to do otherwise. Um, so that's really important. And I know they've also contributed to our, our many of our meal programs that we offer at the Cameron Senior Center just by providing a subsidy. So again, you know, people at, at every realm of their social economic status can again participate and just enjoy one another's company. Um, each year, we, we, do get, we do see Lori usually around Christmas time um, she comes into the center um, with checks, and um, one of the real big fundraisers um, that she has done for us as far as raising money is to support our holiday food basket program, um, which impacts many families um, in Westford. Um, it provides food for families to have a, a memorable Thanksgiving meal together, as well as a, a holiday meal um, around Christmas time and um, provides presents for children that would not be able to get um, presents after all. And I think that might be a little bit surprising, but one would, would say, well, you know, how would you qualify? How do you know that these families have a need? But these are individuals, um, their families, you know, um, their children are, are on the free and reduced lunch programs in the schools. Um, these are older adults that re receive fuel assistance um, to help with heat um, and cooling during the winter and summer months. Um, individuals that are receive food stamps here in the community, as well as live in income-based housing. So again, you know, um, it provides many with opportunities that perhaps they would not have otherwise. And you were saying that um, the food pantry is seeing uh, an uptick right. of people. Yes, yesterday I was actually in their board meeting and 
um, typically in a month they're seeing 166 families um, so it continues to increase in the summer months it's there's a, a really um, it increases even more just because we've got children um, that aren't at school and they're, they're not being able to participate in the, the free breakfast or the lunch program um, so you know that that's that's a financial burden on households that are living on a very tight income um, so the summer months there was a tremendous need um, for food um, for families in Westford during the summer months and I think sometimes people may forget that because the holidays you you think hmm, about that's family you, dinners, yeah. special holidays. That's when you start thinking about helping and right. wanting to do the right thing. And summer is sort of a time where people, people are vacationing. Right, take a um, vacation and don't. Do really you get? Do you find that you get fewer donations? People, fewer people coming in, dropping food off during right, the summer. Right, right, right. So uh, again, this is a, you know a, another area where the the foundation has stepped in and helped fill the shelves when. Um, the donations were low. Well, let us help you with publicity. I mean, we're always happy to run news about that sort of thing and help out. Well, we are people. looking at doing a um, fill the Jeep um, food collection at the farmer's market in July. Oh. So I will let you know the date so you fill can help Jeep. publicize that. Yes. So your Jeep? Not my Jeep, <laughs> but yeah, it's one of our other board members' Jeeps. But that's a great idea. Yeah. And they're really going to just fill it with food? Fill it with food. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Nice. Cereal, food, nice. yeah. Anything yeah. one wants to bring from that's their, great timing their pantry, yeah. yeah. And do you allow um, teenagers specifically to mm -hmm. come and volunteer to help? That's a good question. We're, um, we do. We, we want, that's how I, I you know, um, you, you learn how to give by volunteering. Mm -hmm. And we, we do think that's very important. We do look at what area of the food pantry that high school students um, volunteer in, because we don't want a high school student to be volunteering when maybe um, one of the parents of a classmate comes right. into the food pantry. We really want to maintain that confidentiality. Sure. But we certainly do have high school students help fill the shelves, mm -hmm. um, help do food drives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I'll have a confirmation class at St. Catharines in the yeah. fall, um, and I've been teaching like the same kids for years, and I know that they're gun ho to help, and I think that would be a good place for them. Well, there's we have a lot of volunteer support out of St. Catharines, whether it's mm -hmm. especially with your with your youth and your confirmation classes, mm -hmm. um, and also with Girl Scouts. So we're always mm -hmm. open to young people mm -hmm. experiencing the food pantry. Um, it's a good resource for That's us. Great. I'm yeah. just wondering what's going on with the economy. The economy is strong right now, so I'm wondering, you know, why is this happening uh, that families need help? Well, I think, you know, just, I think sometimes you're just, you're living so close, you know, yeah. um, you don't have a lot of room for any additional hardships, whether it's your car breaks down or, um, you know, you're, you're, you're a little backed up or there's you know on a on a bill and you're trying to catch up and or you've got some medical out. medical expenses or someone in the household um, loses their job yeah mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of unexpected crises that sometimes you don't realize how impactful they are yeah. um, to you may individuals not have like in the community. emergency funds to take care of that and I think too and maybe it's just me but I, I um, when I go to the grocery store it just seems to me like everything's more expensive than it was. Oh, it definitely mm -hmm. is. So I think that's yeah. part of it. Like you're spending more for the same, you know, same amount of what you get. Yeah. I mean, everything. I I have this theory that everything in, forgive me, Market Basket, but everything in Market Basket is four ninety nine, and everything at Whole Foods is seven ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. And it adds up quite a bit, but mm -hmm. um. So I can see why this would be happening. I was the mother, I, I was a single mom um, and a journalist, which is losing combination mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of, you know, just making ends meet. So I know, you know, what that is like. I had a very, I had a wonderful mother who helped me as much as she could, mm -hmm. but yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was, we had rough years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, and I think to your point, you know, it's, you know, when you can give, um, it's good to do that because you really never know how it's going to impact someone. 
And you never never know it could be you someday. Absolutely. Who needs help? Exactly. You know. Right. Tables turn very quickly. A divorce, a death. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, Stephanie, I wanted you to have a few minutes to share your um, story with um, the rest of the community. Uh, some people probably remember it, and okay. some people may not know about it. So, I'm going to give you the floor. Sure. Because you are, you, you were, your fundraising cause was a, was uh, received funds from the West for Charitable. Absolutely, Foundation. we're very, you know, very grateful for that. It helped us to reach our goal back in, gosh, this was about nine, nine, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, as many people in the community know, our son passed away in 2007. Um, as an infant, our son Ronan, um, from a very rare metabolic disease. Um, and even though he was an infant and of course wasn't able to use a playground at that age, um, his disease kind of raised our awareness mm -hmm. um, of disabilities and what children really struggle with. You know, older mm -hmm. kids, um, when they go to a traditional playground and aren't able to use them, and it was shortly after he had passed away, I had taken our older daughter, Bryn, who was um, about two and a half at the time, um, to a nearby playground. And, you know, she was running around doing what two-year-olds do. And all I could do was look around and realize that there was very little that he would have been able to do had he still been mm -hmm. alive. Um, you know, he would have been, wouldn't have been able to join her. He would have sat in a stroller or a wheelchair. Um, and at the time, I, you know, we didn't know anything about uh, handicapped accessible or what they call barrier-free playgrounds. Mm. Um, so I remember calling my husband that day and saying, you know, I have this idea. And so we started doing some research and um, I found an organization that kind of guides communities in um, building what they call barrier-free playgrounds, um, you know, giving us the input that we needed, um, you know, helping us design uh, the equipment, the surfacing, the, basically the whole thing to mm -hmm. um, meet the needs of the community so that, you know, not just for a handicapped child, but for the entire family. Um, or even as we were talking about earlier, if there's a handicapped parent or grandparent, um, it makes it easier for them to take their children to a playground. So, and mm -hmm. of course, we're very grateful for the foundation's support and, um, you know, the whole community's support that allowed us to meet our goal many years ago. And your goal was what? How much did you raise? Um, I believe it was in the area of around 300,000 um, and that included in-kind donations as mm -hmm. well of, um, you know, construction support, uh, materials, financial funding. And that's what the playground costs? Correct. 300,000, which, I mean, it's just mind-boggling to think that a playground Well, and a lot of it, of course, as we talked about, was the, um, the surfacing. To make it handicapped accessible, it needs to have a certain kind of surfacing mm -hmm. that um, you know, a wheelchair or um, a walk or anything can get over easily. So I remember writing that article for you when I, I was, I think I wrote that for the Boston Globe. Yes. And, um, and you were so nice about it. And then um, I, you know, every so often, I used to live in that part of town. I don't anymore, but I, I live in Chelmsford now. But um, I would just go there and watch, you know, and I just felt like, because I'd written the article, I felt this attachment to it. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing to just sit there and watch the people come and use it. I mean, it's wonderful for us to go and see it, it crowded, um, you yeah. know, just to see, you know, even when, even when something needs repairing, I look at that as a positive. I look at it as, you know, this place is so busy that we need to keep up with it. And um, I love it when the parking lot is full on a summer day mm -hmm. and, um, you know, obviously we want to see every child there, but when I see uh, a child with some kind of special need who this playground's really meeting, um, meeting a need for them that might not be met somewhere else, it's, it's meaningful for us. So yeah, for us as a family, it allows his memory to live on and you know, we're grateful for that and um, grateful for so many people that helped make it happen all those years ago. You mentioned that your annual cleanup day is coming soon. Yes, the first uh, Sunday in June, we have a cleanup with, um, I believe it's our ninth, uh, we've tried to do it each year and just, you know, freshen up the gardens and um, keep it looking nice and people come with trash bags and wheelbarrows and rakes and um, we've had a great turnout each year. And can anybody come and help? Anybody can come, absolutely. Um, we've always said we've picked a rain, we would pick a rain date and so far we've lucked out with the weather and oh, haven't wow. needed that, so it's worked out well. That's a pretty good track record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it looks beautiful when everybody's done just to, you know, mm -hmm. be able to walk mm -hmm. away and we've got fresh mulch there and 
um, you know, we clean up the rubber mulch and, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have some handy people with some gardening skills and we break up some of the lilies and it just, it looks great afterwards. So awesome. mm -hmm. we appreciate it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what's, what's, Mary and you, um, what's the hardest part of running the Westford Parent Connection? What, what do you run into every year? Well, we're in, uh, I look at it as a, an enviable, enviable position that more and more people are requesting our services. And when I say services, I mean primarily our speaker series. Um, we focus on the social and emotional development of our young people. And, um, you know, if you talk to people at the high school, for example, um, mental health issues are on the rise, hospitalizations are on the rise. Mm -hmm. Um, we are getting better as a community, as, a, as a, uh, a whole, of talking about mental illness, anxiety, depression, and self-injurious behaviors and things like that. But there's such a need um, to educate parents, teachers, and so on, um, that people are requesting things. And we're really only limited by um, the amount of money we raise. Because I can go out, we can go out, and I can get a speaker for anything you want to talk about. Um, you know, be it a, a speaker or a movie or a panel discussion, um, <coughs> just that costs money, sometimes a lot of money. So it's just, that's what we're hindered by. What's the range in fees that you've paid maybe over last year, over the past year or so? Uh, it may not sound like a lot, but we, um, we probably spend between ten and 15000 a year, and that's primarily speaker fees. But a speaker could be anywhere from 500 to several thousand dollars. Um, I always say, like I, um, people will ask, oh, you know, what about this speaker? What about this author? Um, I'll check anybody out. But um, I've had people say to me, well, yeah, I'd love to come to Westford, but it's, you know, I, I charge ten or fifteen thousand dollars just for oh one speaker gosh. for two hours. Thank you very much. You know, mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah. You know, even if I had that, I couldn't, in, in good conscience, spend that. I mean that they get it legitimately get that money but mm -hmm. we you know we like because there's so many things we want to cover I can't spend it all in one place so can, do you have in your head what you have to raise every year <laughs> you, well we do have a treasurer and she says Marianne here's the budget but I'm like whoa let's do this <laughs> let's do that let's add you know um, yes there is a budget um, I try to stay around 10,000 in terms of speaker fees um, and then there's probably a couple thousand for administrative, like making copies of uh, you know handouts and things like that, um, office supplies. Um, and luckily, we have a cushion of several thousand dollars from year to year, so that um, you know if we want somebody in the fall and we haven't raised the money yet for that year, we have the money from just years past. Oh, that's good so, planning. But we our Cheryl, our treasurer, is fabulous and keeps me in line because she'll, you know. But we have, this this year we have um, 12 events, which is a lot. Oh, that's a you lot. You know, for only yeah. a couple of people on the board to do that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, very interesting. Jennifer, what about you? What's the hardest part of your job at the Cameron Senior Center? Well, I think probably, like with many nonprofits, you know, the town's a nonprofit, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of need, you know. Um, we see need, you know, through social services, you know, whether you're helping someone, you know, with, with fuel assistance or you're dealing with someone that might be facing homelessness um, or, you know, may need some special equipment. Um, then we also have people that, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, they can participate in all the programs and events um, that the center has. So, you know, I think, you know, I think probably with any type of nonprofit, you know, funding is always yeah, a big piece big in thing. what you can do and what you can't do. So again, you know, it's, you know the you know, foundations, um, you know, such as the Westford Charitable Foundation, um, you know, they make opportunities happen. Absolutely. They make mm -hmm. playgrounds happen, Absolutely. you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and they help, you know, children have, children and adults, you know, try to understand mental health so we can mm -hmm. be a better community. So. Yes, treat our treat everyone with kindness and also give give unto them. Um, what was the hardest part about raising the three hundred thousand? Um, maybe there it's was hard to say. I mean, it was yeah. it was a long couple of years. Like it yeah. was probably about eighteen to twenty months of fundraising, and then um, 
you know, from there, once we got that final amount that we needed, we were able to start construction. Right. Um, and our goal was about two years from start to finish, which is kind of exactly what it ended up being. But That's great. Um, I mean, I guess what surprised us the most was the way everyone really um, rallied and came together. You know, we kind of didn't know what to expect. Um, mm -hmm. If I recall, and it was nine or 10 years ago, I don't recall the economy being super strong at that time. Um, you know, so we didn't know what we'd be into. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess we thought, okay, big companies, it might be, it might be the source of the funding, but really it was like the individuals within our community mm. um, and the foundations in our community. Um, like it was just really the, the town and everybody within it that came together. Um, and, you know, we're grateful for the foundation support. We're grateful for so many of the um, people in the community that, um, you know, I, I think they were moved by the story and wanted to help. Oh, it was a very moving um, story. And I did, I used to see the flyers everywhere. <laughs> and I was thinking, I just thought, Well, I mean, the schools all effective. helped. They did like penny drives. I remember mm -hmm. years ago at Stony yep. Brook. I remember going and talked to the kids at the day school where I've now got two kids there. Um, <laughs> and trying to get everybody involved, I think, um, you know, I think it meant something to children to be able to hear, well, what if, you know, I remember going to talk to some of the kids and saying, well, what if, um, what if you couldn't participate in something at your school or a playground and how would that make you mm -hmm. feel? And, um, you know, trying to get them to understand what it might be like for a child with a disability that um, you know, couldn't enjoy the, the stuff that we all take for granted. So um, I, don't, I don't know if I can say what the hardest part was. I guess it was just Maybe the initial planning and wondering, you know, Can this is, is this going to is this yeah. going to come to fruition? Are we going to make this happen? And um, you know, it seems and like a lifetime ago, I guess, at this point. It does feel like a lifetime ago, but in the, you did all this in, with grief. You know, where most of us can't even function. You you raised three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, we had so many people involved. I mean, our our families, our friends, um, you know, all really came together to support the project and. Um, I mean, to us, that's his legacy, because that was one of the hardest things, is to feel like um, not only are you losing a child and the memories, but you're losing their future. So for us to, mm -hmm. you know, we feel like this is his way of having an impact on people. If you don't mind my asking, how many months was he when he passed away? Five months. Yeah. Hmm. So it really, I mean, you had time to bond with him, and then you lost him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I say it was, it was as much um, missing out on the life we were planning ahead with him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, certainly the grief of the couple only having had him for several months, but it was, you know, when you lose a child, you're, you're as much missing out on all the hopes and dreams you had for them right. and, and thinking ahead to the, all the different milestones that, you know, we kind of take for granted and every other child will enjoy at that they didn't get to have that first day of school or that first Christmas or those kinds of things. Mm. So. so you all, you kind of gave away the happy ending though. Um, I mean, you did lose Ronan and that'll never go away, but you also then had twins, right? Yes, nine years old. Wow. Nine years old? They're nine now, yes. Oh my They're God. Nine. Wow. Yeah, so. isn't that amazing? So And all this. three of our kids are, you know, when we do our annual cleanup, um, they're right there in with everybody else and um, wow. you know it's nice I obviously they weren't around for the uh, the whole process although they were I was pregnant with them at the at the grand opening but mm -hmm. um, you know we've tried to keep his memory alive for them and you know the story of the playground and mm -hmm. and kind of how it came to be um, hard to know if they can fully appreciate it but I you, think they want will. them if they, they don't yeah, they will yeah. you know it's kind yeah. of like you're a member of a club that nobody wants to be right. a member of. And, um, but I think um, we lost a nephew at the age of three. And I remember my brother-in-law, his, his father actually gave the eulogy, which shocked me because I thought, how can you even speak? How right. can you even function? And he gave the most beautiful, most eloquent speech. And his thing was, please don't forget my little boy. And your son won't be forgotten ever. And this is a fabulous legacy for him and for his siblings too, to carry forward. And at the time, you know, I'm sure there's more at this point, but, at the, you know, 10 years ago, there were no other barrier-free playgrounds. I think the next closest was maybe in Boston or, um, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, the suburbs close to Boston. So if you've got a child with some kind of a disability, you're not driving an hour so that they can mm -hmm. go on the swings or the slide mm -hmm. with you. Um, you know, so that was our, I'm like, we need to make this happen in our community. And um, you got it done. So, yeah, that's impressive. 
And you had, uh, was it, uh, is it a boy and a girl? Yes, boy girl twins. So 14 year olds and nine year old twins. So we're busy these days. But <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, who? But boy. they'll all be there. They're all there when we do our, our annual cleanup. And mm -hmm. um, I remember one year we were there just playing, and my younger daughter had seen somebody like throwing mulch. Just, a, you know, a kid just, just being a kid. And she went up to them and said, This is my brother's playground. And so. Oh. Defending mm -hmm. her brother's honor. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. lovely. Yeah. Well, the time has flown by. You guys are really interesting to talk to. And I, I hope people watch this because this is really, this is really wonderful what you are all doing in the community or have done. Um, any last words? I just commend you for having the vision and going forth and I hope you gave yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, Thank wow. you. Quite, ladies quite, too. quite an accomplishment. And, you know, we are all very grateful to Lori and the West uh, Charitable Foundation for making all of these such a huge assortment or a range of things. And this community is a much better place because of the work that she's done. Just, I mean, these are just three of the areas that have, have been touched by her generosity. So. Yes, there are many more that I don't can't even list. You might know a few of them. I mean, it, if you go to the Road Race website, there's a list yeah. of like two dozen easily. Jen? A absolutely. I, I was doing a little bit of research last night, and um, there's quite an extensive um, list of organizations um, that have, you know, they're doing great, great work. Um, it makes Westford the community that it is. Thank you mm -hmm. all for coming today. Thank you so much. Really. Thanks for having us. thrilled to have you. For Westford Cat News, this is Joyce Polino Crane. Hope to see you at the road race on May 5th. Take care.